Hello guys, my name is DJ Ola Seven Owen. Welcome to the Chief A Marshal. Welcome to yet another exciting edition of On the Spot. This is one of my favorite segments here on the Ola Seven Podcast Show. And guess what? Tonight I'm hosting one of the most, should I say, controversial prophets here in Zimbabwe. He's been trending of late, you know, for the past um, uh, two weeks or so. He's been trending Painema allegations against your Profit vanita ya jimba vambava. Jekuba zimota nechi nechi mushure mekunge mapuliza abata mbava pamba panogara profit. We get to find kuti shaka famba seifana wa kutoka mira sechi chaka itika uh, kumba kwa avo. So zitara wano zio Prophet um, Elijah Lincoln. Um, welcome to the show Prophet. Well, thank you. And uh, you know so you were born Lincoln Elijah. Um, I mean Prophet uh, you were born Lincoln tichawa na Pharaoh. So, but how uh, now about the prophet uh, Elijah, you know, Lincoln or Black Elijah? Is that so? Yeah, that's true. Okay, why Elijah? Uh, when I had an encounter with God, God forbid me from using my first name, which is Lincoln, and named me Elijah. So, uh, there was a time when I was doing, uh, when God was working great things in me, through me in mm-hmm. India. Mm-hmm. So the Indians called me the Black Elijah because mm-hmm. I was a black man among okay. the Indians. Mm-hmm. So that's where the Black Elijah name came from. What were you doing that, you know, made people uh, give you that name, uh, Elijah, Black Elijah? It was the authentic of, of the prophecies and how God would speak to his people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Authentic prophet, uh, prophecies? Yeah. So you are, So everything that you say is very accurate, authentic, uh, we speak as we are led, and mm-hmm. I, will, I will not put myself to be God. So, as a human being, mm-hmm. there might be errors, but I speak as I'm led. There was an, uh, another Elijah in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Are you trying to be the, that one, or it's, uh, it's a different Elijah altogether? No, I'm not trying to be one. I'm the reincarnated mm-hmm. of the biblical called Elijah. Mm-hmm. So, there's a link? Mm-hmm. Or oh, Elijah in the Bible? I'm his reincarnation. Tell, tell us more about that. Mm. What do you mean by that? Okay. You see, everything that takes place in this realm has already take, took place somewhere. Mm. We're living in a world of spiritual realities. Mm-hmm. We're living in a world, in a realm that is controlled by the realm that matters. Mm-hmm. So nothing is new under the sun. Mm-hmm. Those that have gone will always find a way of coming back into time and affecting our movements and what we do. Mm-hmm. So why don't you say the same Zimu or what? It's different how people who choose to put it and say that either Vachadzoka Sem Zimu or Vachadzoka is what. You check even the same Elijah reincarnated even in the New Testament through John the Baptist. So there is spirituality. As much as we can deny a lot of things, but we can't deny the spirituality of things. Mm-hmm. Life is very spiritual. Mm-hmm. The life we are living in here now, it's a second end life. It has already took place somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. So the heavens and the earth are twins. Mm-hmm. And what takes place there or it also takes place here. Mm-hmm. So we need to have uh, the technicalities on how we download spiritual realities into our daily existence. Okay. Mm-hmm. So briefly tell us about uh, you know Prophet uh, Lincoln. Mm-hmm. We want to know more about you. Okay. I'm born Lincoln Pharaoh. And uh, I have a background in engineering and also a background in philosophy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm a father of two. I'm not married. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> you shall get into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when and how did you become, you know, a prophet? Uh, to those that knows me from way back in high school, mm-hmm. uh, God had a way of using me from young age. It became fully function on my life by the age of 16. But from the age of seven, I used to preach in, in a Methodist church mm-hmm. because I was born and raised in, in Methodist. Mm-hmm. I used to preach, I used to have dreams, I used to minister, but I never knew that it was something peculiar mm-hmm. until it became clear from mm-hmm. the age of 16. Okay. So you, were, so you are a Methodist? I came from Methodist. Mm-hmm. Okay. So who ordained you, you know, to be a prophet? Um, or title you could prophet. Because we, we, we have got bishops, apostles, pastors, and all. You know, growing up in Methodist, uh, study, and I started having 
deep encounters in my teens and I did not understood things that were happening around me. Mm-hmm. Then I started uh, moving to Pentecostals, trying to seek for deliverance mm-hmm. because I didn't understand things that were happening around me. Mm-hmm. When I would sleep, I would see things. I would have encounters of things that were not understood by mm-hmm. people within my 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 surroundings. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went to AFM that was on our skistin. Uh, was led the, it was under Revival Grace Church led by Apostle Tigere. Mm-hmm. When I went to the man of God, I thought he was going to cast out demons because of the encounters and the dreams that I was having mm-hmm. because I was confused yeah. as a young man. Mm-hmm. Then when he touched me, he says, God, Makazoza Samuel, and as you have ordained Samuel, you are also ordaining this young prophet. And that prayer, like, got me worried. What is this mm-hmm. man saying? I thought he's going to cast out these mm-hmm. things that are talking to me because I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. So from that day, I started uh visiting the church of the men of God, following the church of the men of God mm-hmm. until my calling was defined in that ministry mm-hmm. and became clear. So in other words, you're saying um, uh, Apostle Tigere yeah, Apostle Tigere. Uh, is the one who ordained you. Yeah, he's the man that ordained me. Have you ever maybe get, get some time to talk to him again uh, ever since you left the church? Uh, now and then I I make sure I don't lose contact with him. Mm-hmm. So I understand God gave people, you know, different gifts. Uh, if my, my, my prophets are gifts, you know, siyana, siyana. Mm-hmm. I'm a prophet just to give prophecies. Uh, some, one of them, you know, for healing and deliverance. Uh, uh, I've seen God moving more through prophetic words mm-hmm. and, and deliverance. I've seen God speaking to people. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, that's what I can say. So in other words, mrukuta imimi kwenye kuchiporofit. Yeah. Ndoko maka wandira. Ndoko tuka wandira. Taura za kati shichitika. Yeah. The zipi zimwe. You know, what, what, what are some of the prophecies that we've made, you know, before that have come to, to pass? I think uh, that was 2018 uh, when we were heading towards election. I was invited by Apostle to get a, he had a conference called Gathering of Champions. Uh, and everyone was expecting, I think it's 2018 or 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, towards elections and everyone was expecting that the opposition would get in power. Mm-hmm. And boldly I spoke and I told them what I had seen mm-hmm. coming. What that, did you see? Uh, it was uh, that pro, uh, President Emerson Mnangawa would still lead mm-hmm. to be the president. Mm-hmm. That, that was, was that a prophecy or it was um, you know, an assumption? No, it wasn't an assumption. It was a prophecy because to everyone then it looked like it's not going to mm-hmm. happen that way. Okay. So as a man of God, uh, Prophet Lingon, the society looks up to you, you know that. And uh, when I was just out here, I was just out here, you are know, always morally you know, upright. So what do you want to say? Kutumunge mchita, swamunge mchita, jisinga so shorisi society, jisinga so shorisi starenyu, nila mwari mu society. You know, we try by all means to, to live up to the biblical standards. Of course, we are men. We, we're not God. Mm-hmm. We, we tend to make mistakes. And we try by all means to rectify if there are any errors mm-hmm. that we do. Okay. Because at the end of the day, that demarcates us between men and God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So the re- and then recently, Prophet Eli- uh, 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 Lincoln, or Elijah, uh, you made headlines, and this time for the wrong reasons, you know, um, you know, panga uh, you were allegedly um, arrested for an alleged you know, stealing a car. Please share more light on that. You know what happened is, uh, you know, there's a Shona saying that says mm-hmm. My home has been always a home that is welcome to. I've stayed with a lot of people. I've heard people that did not have anywhere to stay. Maybe and, before mm-hmm. before you proceed. Mm-hmm. Let me just read, uh, especially to our viewers, uh, the RRB report. Here's the police report that uh, was announced by the Zimbabwe Republic Police, and it reads, ZRP reports that innocent Chigwaza, 40 years, Joannis Matema, 28, and Lincoln Tichawana, Ferro, 29, were arrested in connection with a case of theft of a motor vehicle that occurred in Kwazana 3 on, tw- on January 23 in which a Nissan Atlas motor vehicle was stolen. The, the stolen motor vehicle was tracked and recovered at the, at the suspect's place of residence. Close court. 
And in this video, you know, uh, that circulated, we understood that your place of residence, uh, Prophet, uh, is actually your house. Yeah. Um, it's actually your house. What happened? If you can then narrate the, uh, the audio. Okay. Uh, three weeks ago, I was staying, I started staying with a friend. We grew up together. His name is Ashley. And if you could listen to the videos, the thieves were asked if they know me. And they say that they don't know me, but they know Ashley. He's the one that they work with. Ashley was a friend to me. And I took him as a brother because I met Ashley in 2012. Um, and two years from there, I left Zimbabwe for South Africa and I came back last year. And when we come back, and I, when I come back, I rekindled because we used to pray together with Ashu. We used to attend the same church. But I didn't know that now Ashu was involved in any theft activity or in any crime. Mm -hmm. So what happened three weeks ago, Ashu came and started staying with me. It's like there was something going on by his, by his home. There were issues that were there. Then he asked if he could move in with me. As I was staying four hours alone, I accommodated Ashi. And then one morning, I wake up, and that was on the 23rd of January, I think so. I wake up, there was a combi and uh, and that Nissan Atlas, something like that. Yeah. Car. And they were parked by the house, and the combi was removed, the gearbox. Mm. And Ashi's friend, called Innocent, was busy like doing the mechanic thing on the car. And then I ask you, dude, guys, what's, what's, what's happening? Then Innocent says, no, it's my car. I'm just fixing it because I want to I wanna put it on the road. It has to do business. Then I didn't worry because I didn't know Ashi as, as a thief. And these people came because of, because of Ashi. It was my first time actually to meet even one of the thieves called John Nira. They when I saw them in the morning. Innocent, I had met him before because he was once brought by Ashi to fix my, my car. My car had some... Mm -hmm. issues that were there. Yeah. And Ashi brought Innocent saying he's a mechanic, mm -hmm. even though he couldn't fix what he was supposed to fix. So when I saw when I saw them with these cars, I never thought of anything. I was literally like as shocked as everyone mm -hmm. when the police arrived. So when the police so I, I did my washing. When I was done with my washing as a bachelor, I went back inside the house. Mm -hmm. When I went inside the house, then after some few minutes, Ashi left going to buy food at the shops. When Ash left going to buy food, then 10 minutes, the police arrived and I heard a gunshot outside of the house. Police saying, everyone lie down and all that and everything. I was inside the house. The police didn't even enter, uh, enter the house. I decided to come out. I raised my hands and says, guys, I'm a pastor. What's, what's happening? I would have chosen to stay inside, mm -hmm. but I didn't choose to stay inside because I also wanted to understand what was happening because I didn't know mm -hmm. what these vehicles might mm -hmm. have been stolen. And even in the confession... Why, why did you mention I'm a pastor? What's happening? I, I, I needed to understand. I, 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 the whole thing that was happening did not have integrity. Mm -hmm. And it was outside of things that I would expect to happen by my place. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to, to engage in a conversation. Mm -hmm. So when I raised my hands coming out and says, guys, I'm a pastor. What's happening? Then one of the police told me, lay down and begin already to beat me. And I lay down, he continued beating me. They handcuffed me, he continued beating me. And I still continued saying, guys, I don't know what's happening. Chichirugi Chika. If you saw the whole video, you might mm -hmm. even have heard of those things. Yeah. So even in the confession of the thieves, even when we arrived at the police station, they mm -hmm. kept on saying that this guy knows nothing. We work with Ashley. We only came in the morning because I saw them in the morning when I wake up. So where was Ashley then? Ashley was by the shops. So when the he moment heard, the police came. Yeah, the moment the police came. Mm -hmm. So when he heard that, definitely when he heard that the police is at the better place. Who told him? I don't know. Because I Oh, maybe that. you alerted him? No, I didn't alert him because mm. I didn't have my phone then. Okay. I didn't even have any time to mm -hmm. do that. And why would I even try to protect him while he has dragged my name into, mm -hmm. into mud? I, I was also want him to be caught. Mm -hmm. I want him to face justice. Because remember this, like, that was my first time to be introduced in the public space of Zimbabwe. Yeah. And being introduced in such a bad manner, it's, it's so bad. You get the point? It would take years to recover. So you went to the police station? Yeah, we, we, we were taken in uh, to the police station. Mm -hmm. and we, What happened uh, there? Mm. Uh, the the, the poli local police kept co continued beating me up, trying to get the, like, the fake threat and all that. And, um, because it was a serious matter. It was a serious mm. matter. It was a serious matter. 
And the thieves kept on telling the police that this guy knows nothing. We only know the guy that he stays with by mm-hmm. the name Ashi. Mm-hmm. He's the one that we, we work with. And I was shocked because the thieves even said that Ash is their boss. Mm-hmm. And without how men quiet the guy is, you'd never even think of him being a mafia mm-hmm. or being a gangster or doing things to such mm-hmm. to such level. Yeah. Then we're taken for further more questioning by his, uh, the VTS arrived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're taken to South Atom CID. They continued the interrogation. They continued fearing. And the thieves kept on saying one and the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. That's the only reason why I was cleared from the whole matter. Was you, were, the, you were cleared by the police? I was cleared. So there's no more, you know, um, something. You're no longer on. You're off the record now. You're off no, the hook. Yeah, I'm off the hook. Mm-hmm. But the police kept on. They had to take their time to interrogate me and all mm-hmm. that and everything. So where is Ashley now? Ashley, we don't even know where he is now. Do you guys talk? No, he never even reached out, even to say sorry. He never even reached Did out. Did you try his call? Uh, his phone was by the police because when the police arrested these guys, the guys that he was working with, they were with Ashley's phone. Mm-hmm. So his phone was is there with by the police. So but even now, mm-hmm. you haven't talked to Ashley? Even now. By any means? Even by any means. He never even tried to reach out. The least I'd expected was for him to reach out. He never even tried. To how, to, how, how, how do you know that is, is, is true, uh, Prophet, that uh, you're not communicating with Ashley, yet you're staying uh, at, at your place. You gave him you know, accommodation as a friend. Yeah, of course. And after all this, mm-hmm. Ashley never came back from the you know, shops, like you mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Like there was someone who alerted him. Uh, the police just came, you know, unexpectedly. They said everyone lie down, whatever. So actually, no, the whole community was was all over. So the noise would literally reach out to him, reach to him. But that, okay, are you mm-hmm. telling me that mm-hmm. the community knows Ashley? Yeah, the community knows Ashley. Everyone knew him. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew him like as a cool guy, mm-hmm. a quiet guy, a guy that looked innocent. Mm-hmm. Everyone was literally. So probably it could be someone who alerted him from yeah, the community. Yes, probably someone did that. So as a man of God. Mm-hmm. You know, and someone who claims to, you know, hear the voice of God. Um, didn't you see this one coming? Uh, the honest truth is that, like... In the I spirit? Didn't, I didn't see this coming. I never even expected As it. serious it, as it was? I never saw that coming. I, On that one, I, I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I never saw that coming. If I had seen that coming, I wouldn't have even found myself in such, mm. a, such a situation. You know, like, there's a narrative that a lot of men of God try to portray themselves as, as if we are gods. We mm-hmm. know everything. We, like, we are always one step ahead. Mm-hmm. All that. We don't know everything. Mm-hmm. We only know what God allowed us to know. Mm-hmm. And for me, this whole situation was a wake-up call of a last call that God is calling me back mm-hmm. to focus on him and depend on him 100%. Because this wouldn't have happened mm-hmm. if maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay, so do you have, I mean, a car yourself, and uh, what type of car do you drive? Uh, I I drive an S car. Mm-hmm. I would not want to name drop because mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I like to keep my life private, but mm-hmm. I literally drive an S car. That maybe if we would say that car, would buy fifteen of those cars that those guys stole. Okay, fifteen of those. Yeah, I would have literally bought fifteen of what those guys stole. So mm-hmm. there's no way I would literally implicate myself. So you, you are a rich guy. I'm not rich. You're not rich, but you're driving a car that's mm. worth more than you know, mm. 15 times that the, that that of that I mean car. Mm. Those guys stole. No, I'm not rich. I live comfortable. Mm-hmm. I live comfortable. Where, where where do you get your money? Mm? Where do you get your money from? I work for God. For God, mm. God pays you. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> no, people appreciate. That's honest truth. So you you are surviving on appreciation. Yeah, you can put it that way. But is appreciation enough, mm. you know, to, to to buy you a nice car mm. like that? You are saying, uh, if if I can be even honest, mm-hmm. that car even someone bought for me. I someone bought it for, yeah it for you yeah. Mm. I didn't I didn't even buy the car myself. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. Do you have a church now? Uh, in Zimbabwe, I don't have a church. Mm-hmm. Mm. You have a church in South Africa. In South Africa. So. You mean that car was bought in South Africa? No, it was bought here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I still, I owe people. People come for private sessions mm-hmm. and all that and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then someone bought it for you? And someone bought it for me. Mm. Even the house? Uh, no, the house I'm renting. You're renting the house? Yeah, I'm renting. Okay. Oh, no, I, I, I understand and I appreciate. 
what lessons you know uh, can you te- i mean um zabaka is out of that incident um after the zabaka sanga nazo maybe you learned something you know after what i met through like what after what i went through mm-hmm. uh trust me like it's uh i've learned not to trust anyone mm mm-hmm. And I understood now why other big men of God would never open their homes to anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, people always complain when men of God seem to distance themselves from the public and all that and everything. But I, I believe that's some of the things that they would try, that they will be trying to avoid. Mm-hmm. Because look now, I have, I, when I meet every, everyone that I meet now, I have to explain why I'm not involved, why was I like part of that war scandal yeah. and all that and everything. Mm-hmm. And... I don't want to lie, like, yeah. Uh, and the other thing that I, I learned also, mm-hmm. I realized what is Zimbabweans, we need to use. Zimbabweans are very bitter. The comments online, or what people are saying, you know, being judged by people that why, doesn't even know. Why you. do you say mm-hmm. they are bitter? Zimbabweans, we are bitter. Why do you say that? You're judging mm-hmm. from the comments. Of course, you know, there's no, a I've serious seen, allegation, mm-hmm. like someone stole mm-hmm. a car. No, say, I do. A serious one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I do understand, mm-hmm. but I've seen Zimbabweans butchering many people online. I've mm-hmm. seen, like, No, Zimbabwe is the highest rate of cyberbullying <laughs> like okay. in the world. Mm-hmm. And somewhere, somehow, you know, like some of the people we are bullying and some of the people we are butchering, they are going through so much, man. Mm-hmm. And we might contribute to someone's suicide. We might mm-hmm. contribute to someone's uh, trauma and all that and everything. Mm-hmm. So what I s- just say to my fellow countrymen, whatsoever we have been through or whatsoever you have been through as a, as a nation, mm-hmm. we need to you from that. We need to you from that. Okay. Uh, in your introduction, you said you've got two kids and yeah. not married. Yeah, yeah. Do you mind telling us about your kids and um, you know your 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 what happened to your marriage? No, I have I've never been married. I've never even tried. You've marriage. never been married? Yeah, that's honest truth. So you've been just impregnating people? <laughs> yeah, it might look like like that, mm-hmm. but uh, my first son, his name is uh, LJ. Mm-hmm. He's named after me. Okay, he's turning five. Uh, the mother only realized that she was pregnant two months after we had broken up. Okay. And after realizing that she was pregnant, I tried to talk to her that we can try to work out things mm-hmm. for the sake of the baby. As in the marriage or just... No, it was just a relationship. Just say, let's let, let's work out... What, what, what would you well, want? I, I wanted to marry. Okay. I wanted to, to mm-hmm. marry. Mm-hmm. Was I growing up like the life I lived in, I lived, I never wanted to be like my father. Okay. Uh, I never wanted to be like my father. He was like what? No, I, I never knew the man. He was okay. never available. Okay. So I always thought like, like my whole dream, if you'd ask me when I was growing up, I'd say that I don't dream of being rich because automatically I know that I'm going to be rich. Mm-hmm. And I don't dream of being a leader because I know that I was born to lead, not mm-hmm. follow. But all I dreamt of was to be a better man. I wanted to live to correct my father's mistakes. Mm. But before I realized, uh, I had made many mistakes. Yeah. Um, like he did. So what happened to the other one? You said you've got, you, you have, have two. two. Mm. Then the second one also, uh, there were serious frictions between, mm-hmm. between men uh, and the mother mm-hmm. when she fell pregnant. Then we n- never gave it a try to to build marriage or mm-hmm. to try to stay together. Mm-hmm. We we just never tried. That's honest truth. When she mm. told you that, you know what, uh, Lincoln, I'm now pregnant. Mm. What was your reaction? What did you say? I love kids. Trust me. Mm-hmm. I love kids. You love kids, but you don't love the mothers? <laughs> you know, like, uh, okay, being serious, It's good we ra- we raise our env- uh, our kids in environment that are not toxic. Mm-hmm. Once the relationship becomes toxic, at the end of the day, even trying to force it on the basis of we want to live an integral life and all that and everything, mm-hmm. it's gonna cost our kids. I've seen many kids being raised in toxic marriages. So, so are you mm-hmm. saying all your relationship, mm-hmm. your relationships, you know, the relationship you, you've been in, mm-hmm. uh, were that toxic? Not the. It's not all of them. In uh-huh. most of them, I contributed. I wasn't mature enough. Uh-huh. I was selfish. Definitely, just like. Could that be ca- the case as well on this uh, mm. second one? Uh, probably. If the public can crucify me for that, mm-hmm. they can. But I think I was selfish. Mm. Mm. You're selfish. I was. That's honest truth. Mm. Mm. Given a chance, would you take the mother now to be mm. your wife? I would not. I would wish she had something better than me. Why? Hmm. Uh, she's a good woman. Remember, mm. you holding 
a very big office, yeah. a prophet, yeah. some of the people will look up to you and say, wow, you know, mm. then you are like this, you are doing this. Mm. What does it mean? At least I take responsibility of my own actions. Mm -hmm. So don't you think he's, he just got some, you know, serious connotations to it? Yeah, of course. It has, everything has consequences. Mm -hmm. And no bad deed goes unpunished. Mm. Yeah. Kuna Proverbs 18, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And whoever finds a wife, a, a, a good wife, I mean, a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Close quote, you know. It seems like, uh, you know, God supports this marriage issue. What, I mean, are you saying now about the marriage? No, uh, you see marriage is a, it's a beautiful thing. But I just want to ask you a question. The three biggest uh, CEOs, let's say CEOs or guys who are running the biggest organizations in the world, it's God, it's Lucifer, and it's Jesus. And of all the things that these three guys could create themselves, they never created themselves wives. Nimuskans were yes, sir. With how naughty Lucifer could be or Satan could be, he never even thought of being naughty, playing around with a woman. He never even made a mistake of even trying to stay with Hold a woman. Hold on there, my brother. Is Satan human? Hmm? Or was he ever a human? He manifests his actions through humans. Through humans? Yeah. Correct. So, why would you expect Satan to have a wife? So if he can achieve this brother through humans, it's never cards. Mm. You are the only one who doesn't have. That's where I'm going. So I'm asking, well, you gave me an example of Saturn. Mm. Saturn is not a human being. Mm -hmm. he, I, I mean, I stand to be corrected. Yeah, no. Was he ever yeah. be? I mean, was was he ever a, a human a, even before in, in the Bible? No, he wasn't. He was a spirit. Spirit, right? So how Maybe would you expect spirit. a spirit to have a wife? Maybe I'm a spirit. How do you expect a spirit? No, no, you're a human being, my brother. We're talking here. I'm not talking to the spirit here. I'm talking to you. Uh, no. So let's, uh, let, let, let's, let's remove Saturn in the... In the, in the equation. <laughs> exactly, right? yeah. yeah. No, no only... It, it's true. Mm, okay. God, again, mm. is God a human being? No. So why would you expect God to have a wife? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm quoting what you've said. We are, we are married. He's three we are, CEOs. Mm. So, Saturn is out. The church is married to Christ. No, 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 wait. Mm. Um, God, you said, mm. my brother, God is not human. Mm -hmm. Are we all agreeing? Yeah, we agree. So, why would you expect God to have a wife when he's not human? Then, you mentioned about, Lucy, about uh, whoever, Christ. Uh, the Christ. Christ is married to the church. To the church? Yeah. So would you say the church is the wife? Mm. Okay, so you're married to what? <laughs> okay, uh, let me be honest on in terms of this one. It's not, marriage is a, it's a gift and it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. There's somewhere, you don't want that blessing? No, no. There's somewhere I was going uh, mm -hmm. about these three guys. Mm -hmm. So until you find the reason why these three guys are not married physically, mm -hmm. then I would literally commit to marriage. Okay. But this is my own explanation. How would, you, my brother, yeah. that's no, where I'm the question somewhere is, with this. how mm. would you expect these three mm. guys mm. to be married, mm. right, physically, when they are not in physical form? We can't touch, we can't point that, mm. that's, that's God, that's mm. Lucifer. We can't even point it there okay, now. Okay, I'm going somewhere with yeah? this conversation. Uh -huh. I'm going somewhere with this conversation. Yes. So there's a mystery that these three understood about women mm -hmm. that they never wanted to mess up with. Mm -hmm. because women are the gatekeepers of everything that are happens. Are you talking on behalf of them? Yeah, I'm talking on, the, on, yeah, I'm talking on behalf of them. On behalf of is who? Now. They are not here to defend I themselves. I was given an understanding by, by the realm. By the realm? Mm. Bro? T trust me, I'm going somewhere. If you can listen to okay, me. Okay, uh, let, 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 I'll, I'll give you a chance. I'm going okay. something. I'm, I'm listening. Mm. These three understood that there's a mystery behind women that is very deep, that nothing comes in time without passing through a woman. Women are gatekeepers year in time. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why even Christ could not come in time without a woman being an entity mm -hmm. or involved at any level, at any, any, at any instance. So women are very precious, trust me. And if you are not ready or if you are not at good at treating them very well, you should never make a mistake of trying to invite her in your space full time because there will be uh, consequences for that. So that's why Paul says it is not good for a man to live alone. But if you have failed like I, 
you can be alone. The women are very, are very precious and their covenants tied to them. And I think I'm, I'm not ready or I'm not, I don't know if I'll be able to keep such, such covenants. Mm. That's the reason why I don't want to try marriage and fail. So, so I'd rather take long rather than marry long. Do you mm. see yourself uh, getting married? I haven't seen myself. I don't see my. I haven't seen myself married. Okay, another question. Mm. Do you see yourself having more kids? No, I'm I'm content with my two kids. Two kids. Mm. Would you say it was a? Do you take that as a mistake? It was. Or it's a glorious mistake. Glorious mistake. Yeah, because my kids can't be a mistake. They are blessings, so they are a glorious mistake. Their mothers, they are mistake. Their mothers are not mistakes. Uh. Maybe I was a mistake to their mothers, but their mothers are not mistakes. Okay. I hold them with so much respect. Mm-hmm. The mothers. The mothers. I value women. I, the reason why I haven't even got married is because when, I value when them. When you say you mm. value them, mm. what is it that's, I mean, that you're mm. doing uh, mm. to the mothers, mm. not just the kids, to the mm. mothers? No, I respect their relationships. Uh, well, the mother of the first kid is actually engaged to someone. Mm-hmm. So I respect their relationship. I don't try to interfere in any of those things. Mm-hmm. Their happiness is, yeah. So how do you engage when it comes to maybe no, you know, co-parenting? And I, I do video calls with my kids now and then. Mm-hmm. I, I also, we co-parent any way that I can be. And the mother of the first one, I'm literally happy that she got married to, she got engaged to a good man. Mm-hmm. So at least he's a good example of my son. The other one is not yet married. The other one is not yet married. If she says, I want you back, uh, let's get, get, uh, mm. get back together. I'm not ready for that. You're not ready for that. Yeah. These days, there are so many issues, you know. Um, we're hearing of the LGBTQ community. Mm. Uh, and also, it's also happening in the churches. Mm. Uh, I mean, mm. what's your take on that? Probably when you say, I don't want to get married, mm. probably might, I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> but probably you might be <laughs> using that path or whatever. Uh, men are like, are you, are you straight? Uh, I'm 100% straight. Men, women are good. Mm-hmm. I would never resort to other things. Mm-hmm. Those that resort, they have their own reasons, but trust me, women are so good. Mm-hmm. Very good. What are you saying? You don't want to be to get married. I don't want to get married because of I know that I'm not I'm not ready to keep the covenants within the marriage. So I would rather stay outside of marriage until I'm ready to keep the covenants. Marriage is deep, it's a mystery. Mm-hmm. So are you are you in a relationship now? I'm a free agent. Free agent? <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys. <laughs> They didn't say the comment section will just need, let you go. <laughs> my guy, they, they will be brutal. Trust me. But I'm being honest. They would rather be brutal on my honest. I'm honest guy. Guns out! <laughs> <laughs> Free agent. Okay. So you're not dating? I'm not committed to anyone. Okay. Mm. Committed. Mm. It's another word. Dating. Mm. Another word. So, when you say you're not committed to anyone, what do you mean? I'm not committed to anyone. But you can just, if you just bump into someone, you just have sex, that's just, okay, bye-bye. Uh, I don't one. know about this sex part, but I go out, I try to get into dating, getting to know someone. Mm-hmm. Mm. How often do you have sex, say, per week? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Several times? I don't know. <laughs> Different people? I don't know. <laughs> Proven! You're singing, man. <laughs> Are you saying that? I didn't say that. You didn't say that? I didn't say that. Okay. Maybe I'm a virgin. <laughs> oh, no. You can be a virgin with two kids, two three mothers. No. You can't, I, that can't be. That can't be true. But several times a week. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Different women? I don't know. <laughs> you know, like um um there, there's a belief in me uh-huh. that one day if I decide to commit to marriage, I think I'll marry two wives at the same time. <laughs> polygamy. <laughs> I believe in polygamy. Oh yo, mm. yeah. Okay, okay. Mm. Why, why why two wives? Okay. Mm? 
<laughs> you know, you, polygamy has always been part of our culture mm-hmm. from the biblical times. We talk of Abraham, we talk of Jacob, we talk of Isaac, and God refers himself as the God of those people. We talk of David. You are, you are okay, referring to the Old Testament, right? I'm referring to the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Even our culture as black people. What about the New Testament? Mm? Does it allow polygamy? Uh, New Testament never really spoke much on... It only says that a bishop, that's according to the book of Titus, mm-hmm. it says a bishop should be a husband of one wife. A bishop, I'm a not bishop. a bishop. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's according to the that's, New Testament. Uh, those are the credentials of a bishop. Like, let me tell you why I'm saying to, if I decide to get married, I might see myself marrying two wives. The reason is that like, I would not want to cheat my wife. Mm-hmm. So I would rather take two of them and make sure these are my two choices. Mm. And... According mm. to the culture, I mean, have you done yeah. your, your research? I've done. On polygamy? On polygamy. Okay. What was their reason mm. of marrying two wives or more? Uh, or it was a symbol of wealth. It was a symbol of... Uh, really? Yeah. Wealth? Was, yeah. What else? It was a symbol of wealth. It was a symbol of like uh, expansion of the family. Mm-hmm. There, there were a lot of mysteries surrounding to that. Yeah. What if I put it to you that... Uh, mm. You know, there were some reasons to say maybe your first wife at times could conceive her. Then the, the, your wife would say, okay, you can go and marry or take, you know, my brother's daughter. Could I be part of the family? Mm-hmm. Or our cousin too. Our cousin too. But these, these wives, they are related. Mm-hmm. Not just from Kwamfakosi, uh, there are two different people. But Python Wamar is a Gassian. Patas Aguzarwa. Open his wish, I take a Munarwara or other old age first out and judge Kwanis in San Opera. By the same way, Dick was it one who did it. Yeah, it's uh, according to uh, I was good at history, so mm-hmm. yeah, according to history, it's some of those things. So, but what are you the conceive and yet the good war and yet the edge? You mentioned about wealth. So, you getting married to two wives, is it about wealth? No, for me, it's not about wealth. Me getting married to two wives, it will be a thing that I don't want to... As I told you, that one of the f- covenants that I fear mm-hmm. at marriage. You know, like, the day you cheat your wife, you did not only cheat on her. You have turned against those that stand with her in the realms of the spirit. And you have literally waged a war against yourself. Mm-hmm. So I would rather be openly married in a polygamy rather than be cheating. Mm. So it's my fear of cheating that I'd rather take my choices and put them together. But they go as far as to not more than that. I don't have that capacity. Okay. Mm. But you have capacity for two. Yeah. You would the money to sustain them? I, I, I told you that I live comfortably. I don't have the money. But okay. I live comfortably. Comfortably. Mm. Um, would you have money appreciation? What if those who are appreciating today... Mm. Stop. I saying that I, I, I live through appreciation mm-hmm. so it doesn't mean that I'm not involved in business. I what, just li- what, like what, to keep what, my what life business private. What business are you into? I like to keep my life private. Because I'm not using this platform to advertise whatsoever. No, no, I you're do. not advertising, but what yeah. business are you into? I mean, we've got mining, we've got yeah. uh, you know, other I stuff. I mean, construction. Construction? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, a few I'm days an engineer by profession, remember? Engineer by profession. Mm. Awesome. So, a few days ago, you posted on your social media mm. and you said, um, you know, uh, uh, Five days ago, actually, mm. it is a caption written in a court mm. to imagine that some uh, to imagine that some idiots almost robbed me an opportunity to, to see my kids growing. Mm. Close court. What was happening there? Oh, that was a direct uh, directed to Ashi. You know, like I never expected myself being arrested my whole entire life, man. Like I've I've tried to live a backward. Mm-hmm. I have political ambitions. Okay. I I want to see my kids growing. So it was never about um, mm. about a relationship? It was not about a relationship. It okay. was directed to the Ashi so guy. To those who are your, whom you are dating, right? Mm. Um, how do you tell them? Because you know, I'm going to go marriage. It's just TikTok. No, I mean, honest guy. TikTok. No, I mean, honest guy. If you, you, you would come across someone that I've ever dated, uh-huh. uh, I'm, I'm an honest guy. I'll literally tell you what you Give me one name so that mm. I can call them and ask them. <laughs> uh, um, there might be no name now. Okay. But I'm I'm very much honest guy. Like mm-hmm. I literally tell you, I do like you and I mm-hmm. I do like whatsoever that we might build. But mm-hmm. as for marriage, don't have expectations. If it happens that one day, I, I, you know, I want to be in a situation where I wake up 
married, not because I expected it. Mm-hmm. Man, I, you know, growing up as an orphan, like I, I always wanted to marry and I was disappointed a lot. I would date someone within three months, I'm already making plans and mm-hmm. all that and everything. Because I was a young man that was privileged by God. By the age of 22, I, I had access to, to wealth. Okay. Or, or by the age of 22, I had mm-hmm. access to wealth. So I grew up wanting to marry so much and, and all that and everything. And I was disappointed by my expectations. So now I get in you that expectation. Too wealthy. And what do you marry then? Uh, I was living comfortable. But you said you're renting. Yeah. No, I, I, I've fallen, man. Like the life that I live, people that knows me from the past, they know that I had a good life, man. So what happened? I had a good life. I, what happened then for you to then? Just like any other young man, I made mistakes. Mm-hmm. I was arrogant. I was proud. I was pompous. I was, mm. at one point, I was into women. Oh, Zekto Daro. Zekto Daro, I wouldn't mm. want to lie. I yeah. was into women, Zekto Daro. Mm-hmm. And those things costed me mm-hmm. to be where I am today. Yeah. Then God gave me another chance, I think, when I was 20, 26. Mm-hmm. And I still messed up. And, and I'm just praying that if he gives me another chance now, I'm not going to mm-hmm. mess up. And now you're 29. Yeah. So it's been three years mm-hmm. trying to find your feet, you know, yeah. back. Yeah. So, as a man of God, been into mm. women, different stuff. Or, I've know? made mistakes. Yeah. That's truth. Um, do you regret those moves? You know, when I look back at my mistakes now, it looks like they're the best thing to have happened to me because they mm-hmm. helped me to be the man that I am today. Mm-hmm. I understand life at a different view, at a mm-hmm. different point. There are things that as a man of God, I'll try to masquerade and hide them. But the reason I don't hide that part of me or that part of my lifestyle or things that I've been through, there are a lot of young people who are like have potential and promising that are going through maybe certain things that I've been mm-hmm. through myself. Yeah. And because <clears throat> our fathers, like, you know, I'm talking about fathers in me, so they presented themselves as superstars. So someone is going through mistakes and through all that and everything, mm-hmm. they don't even know where to get help. Yeah. But if someone knows that I've been there myself as a yes. man of God, there are yeah. days when I messed up, you get the mm-hmm. point. There are days when I was a player, you get the point. There are days when I did things that I'm not even proud of. There yeah. are stories that I can't even shout when I speak about. Yeah. At least they'll know that there's someone who's been there and... God rescued him after mm. all. Okay, okay. No, I, I, I understand. So, um, you know, have you ever, maybe, did you, did you ever mm. try to take advantage of a congregant or, as, as, I mean, a person who was, you know, seeking help? And Prophet, since you are into, mm. into women, have you ever tried that? Since I was into women, let's yes. just say into women. Yes. <laughs> you know, man, I'm... I think I don't look that bad and I, I'm good at speaking. Mm-hmm. So I would never go for a, I would never literally take advantage of anyone. Mm-hmm. I go for what I love and what I like. So I, I would yeah, mm-hmm. then after my parents, I, no, no, I would never, you, I would I would never right. take advantage of, uh, of someone. Mm-hmm. I would, I would literally go for what I like. I, I'm very choosy. It's not like I just go for everything mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. I would not, Go for something that comes on its own and all that. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you say you don't want to get married, but you have got two kids, you know, from different mother, like you said, um, what message are you communicating to your followers as a prophet? Uh, the honest truth is that we we need to be real. We we don't have to be to be fake about mm-hmm. our choices and our life is a series of decisions and and choices that we make. Yeah, and the choices we make they make us. And I'm I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. Um. Like that, I would not want to commit myself yeah. to any of the mother of, of mm-hmm. my kids because I've made that choice and I've made that decision. So, is sex before marriage a sin according to you? According to me. Uh, according to my understanding, there's nothing actually called sex before marriage. Because once sex is, is performed, it's already a marriage because that's the covenant that consummates marriage. So there's nothing called sex before marriage. And quoting the way you are saying it as the whole oh, church committee says it, sex before marriage is a sin. Sex before marriage is not a sin. Sin is whom you have committed yourself with. Because in the realm of the spirit, there are certain families and certain clans who were never meant to, to come together with. And get into a sexual relationship. Mm-hmm. We literally forming a sin mm-hmm. because the consequences of what we have done is repercussions in the spirit. Mm-hmm. So that's where when God was forbidding us from doing certain things, 
it's not like you didn't want us to enjoy. Sex is nice, trust me. Mm-hmm. But he was trying to protect us mm-hmm. from ourselves. Because if you commit adultery or adultery is for people who are married, yeah. For so adultery <coughs> is for people that are married. If you are married mm-hmm. and you do sex outside of your marriage, that's adultery. That's adultery. Then having sex with uh, before marriage, what is it called? Yeah, it's called fornication. Fornication is it a, is, is it a good thing? Is it the allowed? The Bible says you who fornicates with a you who sleeps with the hallowed has become one flesh. So the danger is of watch the union that you're going to form in the realm of the spirit. Mm. Certain bonds and covenants were never supposed to be meant to be formed. Mm. That's where it becomes a sin. So it's oh. guys. I mean, are you in, in agreement with what uh, you know, Prophet Lincoln is saying here on the All of Saint Podcast? Yo? Mm. Seems like yeah, he's going to pins about wagawada ba mezo. That is not a sin. So how then do I know that this is mm. the right person to have sex with? Uh, in terms of you know once you meet with someone your our energies don't lie they speak reality of ourselves they speak the truth about ourselves energies don't lie there are certain things that we try to force a relationship but yet literally the energies are denying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay so um you were based in South Africa yeah and uh, you moved, uh, you turned back to Zimbabwe. Are you, uh, I mean, last year. So are you permanently back in Zimbabwe or what? No, I'm, I'm 100% back in Zimbabwe. Even after the incident, a lot of people were contacting me, mm-hmm. telling me, hey, you see, we told you, don't go back to Zimbabwe. Look what's happening to you mm-hmm. now and oh, everything and everything. You were living a peaceful life and a good life here in SA and everything. Mm-hmm. But it, of course, I'll never leave Zimbabwe. I love okay. my country mm-hmm. and I've come to serve. Oh, so are you planning on studying another ministry in Zimbabwe? Uh... As the Lord leads, uh, we might lead a ministry uh, called uh, African Church of Christ. What is it? African Church of Christ. African Church of Christ. Of Christ. Tell us more about that. So this church is, uh, it will be based on uh, on a reality. Maybe before you, you, mm. you, you answer that one, mm. what happened to the church that was in South Africa? I, I left it in the end of uh, a guy who was my senior pastor and he's doing very well. And that, it's, that side. Yeah, it's it's he's literally Is he a prophet as well? Yeah. Okay. So now you're talking about um, mm. the, this church mm. in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Mm. So God is a different journey that has been taking me through and I've been going through a spiritual journey. And uh, when we're done with that journey, it might lead to a foundation of a ministry that is built and based on different doctrines from what I've ever believed in. Mm-hmm. So tell us more about this spiritual journey. What were you taught? What am I t- what w- was I taught? I'm mm. still going through two teleges, you know. Um, I'm still a, a student. Mm-hmm. Um, so Zuluk Sangana, when you say African mm. Christian, we said African Christ Church. African Church of Christ. African Church of Christ. African Church, yeah. So, Paul, African, but you tradition that we've been there, just Africa. Urkona Sevan Vatema, Tinichiva, and Chakati Saranda, and Chakati Chingeteza. And it's certain on a matter, it's very important that Tomono got some Mazinza Edo. Then Tozona Mata, Mwari, Tizukurisa Neon, Zakawanda, Zatrugurisa Nazo. Saga, what do you mean? Satovan Botana was Mazinza, Tosakusanamat. At he Tangatan was Mazinza to Tangatanus Gazeris. As, as you are led by the Spirit, because I remember myself when I was doing well in South Africa, and God told me that I needed to come and pay Mumbai Chirezwa. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, no, I can't do that. I'm a Christian. Mm-hmm. And God told me that things are going to go tough on you. And I literally said, uh, uh, I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Then I became a result of that. And when I came to Zimbabwe, that's all I needed to come into mm-hmm. to my family because I was raised by my mother's family. So you and paid to Mumbai the, Chirezwa. And I needed to pay Mumbai Chirezwa. Mm-hmm. And it's very important, those things. So as a, as, a, as a prophet, are you saying there are certain things, you know, that need to be fixed or to be changed? Yeah, culture, yeah. Mm. It's very important. It's very, very important. Bible, the Trotty Bible, Chivan Chukwa Israeli. The Bible is full of the traditions and the cultures of Israel. Mm-hmm. Not Zimbabwe. Not Africa. We adopted that culture 
and as we live according to that culture doesn't mean mm-hmm. we forget who we are mm-hmm. we don't forget who we are we come from somewhere who are we we are what god says we are yes ah. the true definition of who we are our existence is in him mm-hmm. mm. so how do i know that i'm mm. or i'm adopting someone's culture or you adopting you know yes. our, our dreams always are their report cards of our true dna That's the reason why I will be broke today when I sleep and I wake up uh when I sleep I dream myself being successful or doing all this thing and everything your dreams are trying to give you a reality of who you are and one way or the other there's a way that we can always connect and find so there's a there's a, there's a need for everybody to find yourself within the cosmos within the cosmos I found myself as an engineer but then you find yourself within the spiritual aspect of things then in the spiritual aspect of things i found myself as a prophet so is so, there any any link uh, you know uh, between christianity and african uh, you know tra- traditional religion there is always a link because if you check it back if you trace it back from our culture as zimbabweans our ancestors have never worshiped idols they have always believed in one god they called the maker of men musikavano they never worshiped and tend to anything but god related to that generation in a way they understood If Gabriel who looks like a white man would have appeared and says my daughter Nyanda do this and this and this they were going to bind him why because these were people that were going through uh, colonization mm-hmm. these were people that were in apartheid so they would never accept a message from an angel that looks like a white man so god visited them in ways that they would understand you'd come to them through the faces of their grandfathers you'd come to them through the faces of their their mothers aunties and whosoever from their lineage so urgona but the church yakazoro pariza eheres where we say if your mother have died like like mine then if my mother comes in a dream trying to give me a message i bind my mother and says it's a demon how was she my mother when she was alive and she becomes a demon when she goes to the other side mm. that's heres mm-hmm. our relatives our relatives even on the other side mm-hmm. but as we say we as close to the other side was allowed to visit people in time mm-hmm. some of them tukatu msangana uko petro manyisa because they never had a, a defined path with god do you believe in what zimu hmm? uh when you say do i believe in what zimu what do you mean uh, do you believe in what zimu ndoka amadzidu dzakafa kare kare dziri ku dzatinozotenda takuomberera machira emaretso ndi zvimwe zvakadaro eh tichiti what zimu edu nemitupo yavo tichidiketera do you believe in that as a prophet Okay uh the introduction of Jesus Christ from the book of Luke chapter is it 2 and the introduction of um of Jesus according to the gospel of Matthew chapter 1 so knows that this is the account of Jesus who was the son of Joseph Joseph was the son of this one it goes up to David it goes up to Jesse it goes up to Adam and all that and everything avaswa dzimero ari kutaura nezvao akusudegetira ndoke dzinzari kwa Jesse ari kutaura nezvao and all that then back to my question do you believe in what zim i believe that we come from somewhere and our journey is defined from where no, no we one from. is denying that mm. I, i'm sure nobody okay, is denying i believe that they are they are good ancestors and then they are bad ancestors which ones are good mm. which, ones are, which, which ones are bad that's that's the good part of us having christ now he become the discernment part of the whole thing mm-hmm. bozi Or if I never had good intentions towards you when I was alive even when I die I will never have good intentions towards you If I had good intentions towards you when I was alive even when I die That's all runs but even by Borno Tower kuna uh, some uh, second Samuel chapter 9 is there anyone left of the house of Saul for the sake of Jonathan that I've made a covenant with Jonathan is long gone his son Mephibosheth is being remembered as a result of a covenant that was made by his Mm-hmm. father Jonathan mm-hmm. Jonathan I am fako asim zimero I don't believe in worshiping ancestors mm-hmm. but I believe that they there might be connection between us or where we are coming from mm-hmm. but we worship one and living god um how do we worship god as africans how do we worship god as africans i believe that everything that was created by god it was created with a, a nature or a way of bringing us back to him 
of con- reconnecting us with him. Mm-hmm. There's a way that God wanted to connect with us. And he has many ways that he, he uses to reach out to us. He uses situations. He communicates messages through angels. Mm-hmm. Angel just means a messenger, which means if he chose to send my grandfather in a dream with a message, he becomes an angel because God sent him um, with a message. You know what? Dream, mm. it's something different. Then you couldn't have a dream to make your dream with a it's also a way of worshiping, but do you believe that in that? You see, like myself, as I told you that I'm still going through a journey. So on Sunday, I would not advocate for that. But, but you you believe believe is, 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 mm-hmm. as long as your church has ever done an all-white kind of party mm-hmm. or all that and everything, or even that pink, uh, all pink thing and everything, those are rituals. Those are ceremonies. Oh, guys, Anzi, Murguita Chiva, Numa Church. As long as any church has ever been in an all pink kind of thing, all white kind of thing, Chiva and Chirugit. What if um, an event planner, you know, so to say? I'm going to know, guys, let's theme it all white party. Everyone, you know, I know I got the guys white. Is it Chiva from an event planner? What inspired, what inspired that? Trust me, uh, I've been in the no, church. No, it's just for, the event planner. I've been in the church for a long time. Mm-hmm. Trust me, pastors, they are, they are like, they are head on in terms of, they're in charge. No mm-hmm. one planned for them. Mm-hmm. They co short people just execute what the pastor have said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you say, Chivan, Chirigit, Kuma, all white party, Kuma, Chechi, Ma, Pink, have you ever done that? No, I haven't. You haven't? Event. So how, how 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 do you know that these guys are doing rituals? How I do, do you know it's, 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 I've heard a lot of things. I've sat down with people that are on, on different type of religions mm-hmm. and tradition and, and beliefs systems and everything. I learn. I'm a student. Yeah, here in Zimbabwe, mm. who would you say we are getting all white party? And uh, I would at, never want to point. I would never want to draw people's names mm-hmm. out of respect on on like yeah. I would never want to call out names, but if you're a church member, you know your past have done it. Mm-hmm. My all white. My all white. So you're saying, I see, I see, bo. I see, I see, bo. But I don't go to the road. She was in church. She was in church. She was in church. I don't know what I'm saying. Is it certain? Remember, some, something becomes good depending on the situation. But I don't know what I'm saying. But I don't know what I'm saying. It's not certain. I don't know what I'm saying. It's not certain. It's not certain. It's not certain. It's not certain. Right. But Satanism, yeah, mm. Iba. Satanism so, part of the white part, is it connected to Satanism? Or oh. you're just saying, Chivan, Chisnaguipa. You know, it's, it's, uh, Iba, why are we even talking about it? Uh, as I'm saying that it's only the person that uh, that is doing those things knows where you got the inspiration. So we can't discredit something that we never involved ourselves in or that we're not part of it. I can't say this one did it in a wrong way and all that. Who am I? Mm. Mm. So, what's your view on other men of God? I mean, who preaches against uh, African traditional religion? Mm. You know, but uh, zones, what you know, also kind of traditional healers. Yeah, mm. uh, I remember there was um, uh, this uh, traditional healer mm. uh, who at once, you know, <laughs> uh, one, uh, who at one point, I got to know, I so many prophets who shrine Kwage. Uh, you know, like, what I just say is that, like, uh, people out there are looking for joining servants. And uh, the problem that is happening in the church, the church knows what people want to hear. And the church is dishing up what you guys want to hear, not the reality of what you want to hear. You'd rather appreciate a man of God who's honest in terms of where he be, what he believes and where he stands. Mm-hmm. And he comes clean. Because what I know is that about a lot of men of God, they do these things by the sins. And then in public, because they're afraid that the church might not understand it, then they don't come out clean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's your message to my prophets? I don't, I don't know how one would be desperate for God to use them that they even try to help God. Mm-hmm. You got the point. You one you shouldn't be desperate for God to use him to a point of helping the same God that you want to use mm-hmm. him. Because if God wanted to use you in a certain way, you'd literally use you in a certain way. 
What's the take on Nyaikuru wa Makua? Oh, Nyaikuru wa Makua. Uh, I think I'm, I'm still a youth or a junior to understand certain depth in terms of, uh, of, of spiritualities and mm-hmm. all that. But when I white people, they visit their, their family graves, mm-hmm. the churches. There was a time when it looks like visiting a grave site is so bad and all that and everything. They are, white people, when they buy even a new house, they go and tell their dead relatives that, Mama, we've bought a new house, we're moving to this and all that and everything. There's, there's a lot of spirituality that these people do. They even call their dead uh, relatives guides. It's only us black people that calls them demons. Mm. But they call them guides. They call them guides. Okay. And we, we call <clears throat> ours demons as black mm. people. So there is, uh, you know, like the black society, it's like we don't know ourselves mm. and we turn out to people who doesn't even know themselves, trying mm-hmm. to tell us who we are. Mm. So we have a board of directors without direction, confused yet confident. And now, uh, these days, Manjuzu, what's your take on that? Yeah, you see that world now. That's one world that I don't have full understanding about. The, the world of Manjuzu, because I've never interacted with it, and I haven't really got a glimpse of it. Mm-hmm. I've tried to ask a lot of people around it. But one thing that I can tell you all is that there is power in water. We might not understand how the power works around, but mm-hmm. there is something powerful in water. So to the point that if the creature, if the mythical pre- creature called Mehmed, if it exists mm-hmm. and it resides <clears throat> in water, yeah. because there is power in water. Mm-hmm. That's honest truth. Yeah. There is really something powerful about water. Mm-hmm. Even if yourself as a normal individual, if you can visit to some waterfalls and other, I've been to Vic Falls, those waters are so sacred. They are mm-hmm. depth. They are Deep. You get the point? Mm-hmm. There is something about water. But about the mimic part of the whole thing, it's a word that is not clear to me. So I can't, Marine spirit, I can't advocate for it because it's a word that, I, that is not clear to me. Mm. Mm. No, I, I, I hear you. So, uh, uh, Prophet, mm. a number of men of God, you know, uh, have always uh, spoken, uh, spoken loud about uh, their political affiliations. So, um, are you also into politics? Uh, I heard you earlier on saying my political ambitions. So no, are you I have also political into, into ambitions. Politics? I have political ambitions, mm-hmm. and I do not belong to any political fraternity. What as, uh, you know? Maybe, maybe shed more light or more light on uh, your political ambition. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? So yeah. So I was saying that like uh, as I literally I don't belong to any political fraternity. Mm-hmm. But even if I am to belong. It's of no use to join the opposition party in Zimbabwe mm-hmm. because Zimbabwe is built on strong governance and Zimbabwe will forever be ruled by ZANPF. Mm-hmm. Either we love it or we don't like it. That's the reality of Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Zimbabwe will forever be ruled mm-hmm. by ZANPF. They will always betray each other within the fraternity of ZANPF. But leaders will always come from, from, that, uh, from, from that party. And on the other second end, the first opposition party was led by... Lucifer, a rebellion against God by Satan. So sup- supporting opposition parties direct Satanism. You say in the world or Zimbabwe? In Zimbabwe. Or oh, in Zimbabwe. This is just only in Zimbabwe. I'm talking about Zimbabwe. The spirituality that is around Zimbabwe, it's mm-hmm. deep. Zimbabwe well, is a very spiritual country. Shed more light on that. It's a very, very spiritual country. Zimbabwe is laid on, on strong spiritualities. They are strong and powerful men, healers and traditionalists, powerful prophets and spiritualists that you have, uh, I don't know what to say about Zimbabwe, but you see even the future of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe in its profit is going to be the canon of the world one day. That's why Zimbabwe survived a lot of things. Mm. And Zimbabwe, it shall be ruled by a spiritual person. Who is that spiritual person? Hmm? Who is that spiritual person? I don't know. Are you going to be the president? Uh, my ambition is bigger than that. But if it takes me passing through that... What's bigger than the president? I dream of being a general secretary of United Nations. You, oh, general secretary of... Of United Nations. United Nations. I don't limit my, my, my political ambitions on, on the scape of Zimbabwe. Is it a, prophet, a prophecy that was given uh, to you or it's... Um... It's, a, uh, it's a prophecy, but it started as a dream. I started having many dreams when I was uh, doing my form two. And those dreams have materialized to be, to be a reality. Even when I was in South Africa, even at one point in Namibia, God had a way of connecting me in diplomatic spaces without much of efforts. 
So the proof is concerning my life. I know so you believe that. that one day you'll be Secretary General? Of United Nations. Mm. I may not get there, but I'll, I'll be closer than I am today. What is really the role of a Secretary General for such a big organization? Of such a big organization. Yeah. You check uh, the first person who inspired me on 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 such an ambition. It was Kofi Annan. Mm-hmm. Remember, he was General Secretary of United Nations. I think that was around uh, 2006, right? Kofi Annan, you know him from Kenya? Yeah, I know him. So... There's uh, there's much that you did for for the African no, nation. No, uh, you haven't answered my question. What is the role mm. of the Secretary General, where United Nations? What is his role? You have you have said that you want to be in that position. Mm-hmm. What's his role? It's uh, on presiding on the matters of uh, all nations, and uh, this is a uh, like uh, okay. How best should I put it? All right, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you really know what you want to do? No, I know what I want to you do. You understand? But I, I just don't know how best should I put it. Like, No, you should be able to put it yes, as easily, effortlessly, as flawless, because that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's what I want yeah, to do. Yeah, I'm asking you, what is, what, the, what is the role of the Secretary General? Uh, do I have to give the definition through the of book? Of course. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, the, the role of a General Secretary of the United Nations uh this is the man that presides over the matters of uh of the na- of all nations and especially their well-being and uh things that pertains their their welfare are you sure man of god uh that's my understanding no no, no. are you sure of what he said or is just mm. like you said your understanding what about the general, you know. <laughs> so this is the role of uh, the secretary mm-hmm. general. You know, I've, I've done uh, mm-hmm. uh, history mm-hmm. in high school. Yes, yeah. So you know the role of secretary general. You know the role of um, ICC. Mm-hmm. You know the role of, uh, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, we've got an... Um, uh, I want to tease how much. But, uh, you know, all the organs yeah, yeah. of the United Nations, yeah. right? But the roles are clearly stipulated. So, I'm asking you, that particular role that you want to be in, mm. do you really understand it? I think I gave my understanding. If my understanding is not clear enough, then it means I still have a lot of work to go to do. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's still a long way. Yeah. I, still a long way, my brother. Yeah. I, <laughs> At least I'm still young. I, I have a lot of things. I, I, have a lot, I have a long way to catch up. Okay. Not a problem. Mm. So you seem to be, uh, to be more controversial than you know, that. And mm. uh, it's quite interesting uh, that you speak your mind. How do people perceive you? you know, uh, about Hiro Uyumchindo Anopenga. When you talk to them, when you have conversation with them, how do they perceive uh, They don't view me like Madungwe song. <laughs> so you're in between Madungu and who? No, no, I'm not in between okay. Madungu and anyone. They don't perceive me that way. No, uh, I think like people that have got a chance to experience me, be with me, close to me, they tell you that I'm I'm honest of I'm honest with being with what I am, mm-hmm. and how I approach life, and how I live my life. I live an honest life. I'm one man of God that if I decide to visit a club that day, I will not even try to hide it mm-hmm. that I visited a club. I live an honest life. I live an honest life. Okay. So, uh, the media, you know, seems to emphasize the negative uh, aspects of Chivan. Mm. Why do you, I mean, uh, in Daun Bonzo, what, what, what do you think of this? No, it's, it's on that, like, a lot of facts around Chivan, they were misrepresented. We, growing up in families, we, we could see those that were doing Chivan were the same ones, maybe, that were witches or mm. that were... Yeah. So that whole thing literally made people to view Chivanu in a, on a wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. God has trusted me with power as a prophet. The power can bless, the power can curse. It's up to me to choose to use it the right way or mm-hmm. the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So Chivanu was literally, literally misrepresented by Vakachins we saw Chinavi Kutanga. Everything around that. Because now Wakatungu Taroti Chivanu. Mm. But, uh, you know, I mean, um, so can we say African tradition, religion, ATR, and Christianity mm. truly uh, coexist peacefully? 
they coexist peacefully because we believe in the maker of men. We believe in God. Mm. Okay. There are no two other gods. There's no different god somewhere there and all that and everything. Someone said you look like uh, you know prophet uh, uh, J Israel. Are you guys uh, related? No, we're not related, but I've I've heard many people saying that and at one point I had to meet him so that I could see my my twin mm-hmm. because if everyone says that I look like him. Kamaga Sangana No, he's, he's a good man. He's, mm-hmm. he's, he's a good man. Mm-hmm. He's a person that if you see him from a distance, he looks pompous, but he's very humble. He's very humble. Mm, yeah, in person, he's a good man. Very loving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you like Matkin's um, 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 spirit? Uh, spirit not in the spirit, but we may, we may not be bathed from the same place. Uh-huh. Yeah, but <laughs> physically, we look like... What's spirit? What's your spirit? What's your spirit? Those ones is scary for me, but scary. but I can't. Uh, I never even want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, that's the scary part of the whole thing. But generally, him as a person is very loving. Mm-hmm. So, but, but but do you have my do you have my powers as a prophet? Do you have powers? You yourself, do you have powers? Uh, you know, like I cannot. I'm just a person like you that when God chooses to use me this way, he goes that way with me. If he chooses to go this way with me, he goes that way with me. But as a prophet, don't you think you should have powers? I mean, spiritual powers. Those are things that have made people to get into that. No, but no, 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 not, you know, mm. from Sangoma's one. Mm. God, Pachagi, I know equip a moon mm. with the powers. Yeah, Moses mm. was given the powers mm. you know, to defeat Pharaoh. Mm. The powers. And Elijah. Powers. So you as a prophet, do you have a power? Do no, you have I've experienced the, the, the grace of God and the anointing of God through my life. Mm-hmm. What about other people's lives? Yeah, like through Not my your, life, like no. how you reach out to other people. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, your parting remarks. And uh, just to all the viewers uh, that are watching me, I just want to make the record straight that um, I'm not a thief. And I would never resort, even if I choose to be a thief any day, I would never resort to such low paid crime. That one is... You, you, when you say low paid, you want big, big? <laughs> you want what? I know, but Ola, would you really yeah, think... You want to smuggle gold? Uh, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would never resort to such low paid crime. Never. Never, ever. Mm. Never, ever. Okay. Mm. That was Prophet Lincoln here on the Order 7 podcast show on the sports segment. Indeed, it was uh, <laughs> my pleasure hosting him on the Order 7 podcast show where we get to interact with almost everyone, the who's and who's. Oh, we're Muna Muzimbabwe, right? Be it my sports and also entertainment, socialized, business people, politicians, you name them, right? We get to grill them on this platform. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.